iRacing is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all around the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics, engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 170,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsports organizations like NASCAR to deliver virtual races based on the real-life NASCAR Cup Series, as well as many other series on the NASCAR ladder. iRacing also features team racing, providing a variety of options for members to create and manage their own teams, race with friends or real-world teammates in full-length endurance events like the 24 Hours of Daytona, Spa 24, or the Bathurst 12 Hour. Additional partners include IMSA, World of Outlaws, Supercars, and IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own Indianapolis 500, Bathurst 1000, Chili Bowl, and many more iconic events. This is iRacing, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car. Sign up today at iRacing.com. Welcome in here tonight, race fans, to the Southern National Motorsports Park. Here tonight, the Best Gulf of Creations Pro Series for the Upstate Racing League is being brought to you by the Racing Designs 150. My name is Roger Muth here at the Turn 3 Racing Network, and alongside me here tonight, Kelly Daw. Kelly, it's been some exciting racing the last couple of weeks here with the Upstate Racing League, and now we're going to add 50 laps for excitement for all the race fans. Yeah, the endings of these last two races in a row have been just absolutely fantastic. Going back to last week, we saw that last lap pass on the outside for the win. And I think it's a good idea to give these drivers an extra 50 laps of time to work with and give them some more time to, to maybe implement some different tire strategies. Because you, you said it's adding another 50 laps, making adding an extra third onto this race. But these guys are knocking down these laps in 14 seconds, some of them even less. So... I think it it's only going to add really a few more minutes of uh, run time to this race. So we'll have to keep an eye on these drivers and see what they decide to do with these extra 50 laps. Extra 50 laps and one set of tires with one green-white checker attempt if we were to need them at the end of the 150 laps here tonight in the Racing Designs 125. Well, it is time for the Best Colorful Creations drivers to get dirty here tonight. The Racing Designs 125. The Racing Designs also our Rookie of the Year sponsor here with the Upstate Racing League, making custom paints and logos for all the drivers in the URL. Find them over on Facebook.com and tell them the Upstate Racing League has sent them your way. But let's take a quick look here at our Arts Barbershop Championship standings coming into the Racing Designs 150. Robbie Keneally, your championship top spot driver. He's got a commanding lead now over second. He has one 1,014 points over Guillaume Fortin. And, well, Guillaume's been having a great year this season, but has not been able to find victory lane just yet. That 51 of Justin Fuller is sitting back there in third. Bill Martin has picked up a couple spots over the last couple of weeks. He is sitting fourth. Brian Hacker is fifth in the championship standings. J-Mac, Justin McDuff back there in sixth. Barkhouse is seventh. Edson is eighth. Mike Alexander, last season's champion, is ninth. And Joe Schaefer is sitting there tenth. That's your Arts Barbershop championship standings coming into the night's Racing Designs 150. So, man, Kelly, the clock is really starting to tick here. Only a couple races left this season for those drivers to really start to creep in on Robbie Keneally. Yeah, there's a few drivers that are going to have to hope for a, some big problems for that uh, 1K machine for Robbie Keneally because they are way behind. Justin Fuller and Guillaume Fortin, though, both tied just 38 points back. They really just need three good, solid races and just make sure they beat Keneally by a few positions each time. And they're right back into this. And 
really with the way things shaping up, even just a bad race or two from Keneally might knock him out of that top spot. So nothing is set in stone just yet, but keep an eye on that 1K machine because I'm sure he's going to be trying to keep going for the front. Practice is officially over here tonight for the Racing Designs 150. The grid is set here tonight as we will invert the field. Let's take a look here at your starting lineup here tonight for the Racing Designs 150 here tonight for the Best Colorful Creations Pro Series. Joe Schaefer Jr., driver of the Epic Media number 6, will start on the pole here tonight to his outside, driving car number 81. This is the Best Colorful Creations Misfit Motorsports 81 of Jimmy McIntyre Jr. Ellie Musgrave, the youngster out of Washington, driving car number 23 here tonight. Ellie will roll off from the third spot. How about rookie this season? Number 41, E. Jay Aurorick will start back there in P number four. And Brian Rogers Jr., Mr. Lightning McQueen himself, will start fifth. The Rev Racing, number fifth, or 75 of Mike Alexander, will roll from P number six here tonight. While the 18 NY of A.J. Hamill in the Arth Barber Shop Machine will start seventh. Starting eighth, Justin McDuff in the Empire Racing Team Cerebral Palsy Foundation. Stay Salty, number 20, will roll from the eighth position. While the Mad Racing, number 88 of Mad McClain, or Matt McLean will roll off in P number 9. Robbie Keneally, your Arts Barbershop stop, top standings leader in the 1K, will roll from 10th, and that's your top 10. Justin Fuller will be rolling off in the inside in P number 11 in that 51 machine with Guillaume Fortin just to his outside in P12. Bill Martin, the wild man himself, Dr. Noise, will be rolling off in 13th with Brian Hacker to his outside in that 11 machine. Matthew Barkhouse in that 15 car. He'll be rolling off in 15th with the big boss man himself just to his outside in 16th. Brett Bartels will roll off on the inside of row number 9 with Jeremy Carpenter in that one, one machine to his outside. Matt Eddy in the 88 car. He'll be rolling off in P19. And Justin Smith will round out our top 10 on the outside of row 10. Starting back into the 21st position here tonight, driving car number 22 from the Cat 22 Motorsports. This is going to be Mike Colt's claw. It's the racing school number four, Rodney Hahn Toon this season, driving for RHR Racing. We'll start back into the 22nd position. 23rd here tonight, we'll go to the Nasty Narwhal Racing Narrative Coffee, number 53 of Colin Phillip. And starting back into the final starting position here tonight, driving car number eight out of Vermont. This is Andy Lambert. So Lambert will start 24th here tonight. That is your starting lineup here for the Racing Designs 150 here tonight. You can hear the roar down on the starting grid here. The Epic Media Machine, number six of Joe Schaefer Jr. He has not gone to victory lane this season, and he's looking for his first, or second win. Sorry, he has gone to victory lane. The outside lane, though, that best colorful creations of Jimmy McIntyre has had a lot of good runs, just has not found victory lane. Yeah, a couple of really strong drivers towards the front, and it's kind of surprising that Joe Schaefer Jr. is where he is in the standings, considering the last two years he's been uh, a competitor for the championship. But this season, things just haven't quite gone his way. He's only been able to get one win, as you mentioned, and he's sitting all the way back in seventh in points. But maybe tonight will be the break that he needs to just get another win under his belt. Well, the field is rolling here for the Best Golf World Creations Pro Series. Give them two pace laps here before we come into the Hanson Starter Shop restart zone as the Hanson Starter Shop is our start zone area for all the upstate races. The Hanson Starter Shop has 30 years of expertise in the alternator generators and starter business. They also carry new ones, so make sure to hit up the Hanson Starter Shop as we're coming this time by for 150 laps. Joe Schaefer Jr. in control of the field as the pace car now dives to the safety of pit road. Green flag is going to be in the air, and that six machine spins the tires off the start. That's going to allow Jimmy McIntyre Jr. to get a bit of an advantage on the outside into turn one. However, that inside line is going to be way too strong. Joe Schaefer Jr. going to have the advantage. Check up on the outside as EJ O'Rourke gets up towards the wall. One car going around the 1K of Robbie Keneally, your championship leader, is on his lid down the back straight away. It looks like a couple other drivers, Bill Martin, also involved down there and I believe Justin Fuller. So big problems on the opening lap here tonight of the Racing Designs 150 here with some of your top competitors here tonight being involved in a big wreck on the back straight away. We're going to have to take a look back here at this. Let's take a look. Truck says they have it. Watch that 1K. You see him to the outside of the Arts Barber Shop number 18. 
As oh, the stack up there and the 13 of Guillaume Fortin into the back of Robbie Keneally, Bill Martin, Justin Fuller, and Al Smith, along with Rodney Hanzu, nowhere to go. And that is heavy damage on Robbie Keneally's machine. Heavy damage to the Racing Designs, number 13 of Guillaume Fortin as he pulls away. See if we can ride on board here with Guillaume Fortin with the Dr. Noise onboard camera with car number 13 QC. Guillaume riding right there behind Keneally. And there's the big stack up. Keneally goes down to the bottom side and... And Guillaume gets smacked right in the driver door from the 38 of Martin and the 51 of Fuller. They all wind up in a pile of heap down in turn number three. And it, you just mentioned that it was a couple of our contenders. That was all of our contenders involved in that. Keneally, Fuller, and Fortin, our top three in the standings, all involved in that wreck. Fuller is back out on the racetrack. However, Fortan and Keneally still down on pit road and will go at least one lap down at this point. So this could be the big break that that 51 machine of Fuller needed because he's sitting 38 points back from Robbie Keneally. But if Keneally is going to finish this race in last place, if he can't get his car back going, it might be a huge opportunity for that 51 car to break in some points. Well, he'll have to restart back into the 22nd position as we come into the Hanson Starter Shop Restart Zone. We're back racing here tonight at Southern National as Joe Schaefer Jr. that time with a much better restart. He'll roll around the speedway. Jimmy McIntyre will take the second spot. Battle for third. Ellie Musgrave in the narrative. Coffee number 23 works the bottom side of the speedway on EJ O'Rourke. O'Rourke works the outside. He's going to lose a little bit of ground here, so that'll put him back to running in the fourth position. But he's got company down to the inside. Here comes Lightning McQueen. Yeah, the 12th car, Brian Rogers Jr. is going to work the inside line, trying to take away fourth place from EJ O'Rourke. O'Rourke just looking to try to get to that bottom lane because that top lane is just not carrying the speed they need. However, both cars getting a little bit sideways off the corner. EJ O'Rourke now really pinching down on that 12th car. He is going to lose the spot. And now here comes Mike Alexander to fill the hole. Side by side for that spot with Alexander in the highlighter yellow r and Kinsman Auto. Salvage number 75, he works the bottom side as EJ O'Rourke will lose that spot, but AJ Hamill is right there in the Arts Barber Shop number 18. He's not going to be able to as he slips off the corner, so EJ has it, but he's going to overcook the corner. AJ going to get to the inside there. Little tap to the corner panel of car number 41 from AJ Hamill. Now he's going to have a spot. Look behind them. Here comes car 15. That is going to be Barkhouse. He is knocking on the outside here as he just got around car number 20 to stay salty entry that's justin mcduff mcduff has a ton of damage on that nose but look at that 15 of barkhouse just go right around the outside of everybody yeah barkhouse showing tonight that there is a little bit of speed to be found on that high line in this second lane and he's so far making a work passing that 20 of mcduff now he's starting to work his way around egr work he will get clear down into turn number three so Keep an eye on that 15 car. He's already up eight positions. He is going places tonight. That is Barkhouse. That's in the 15 machine. He's up eight spots. He's our biggest mover so far here tonight. EJ O'Rourke is down four spots from where he qualified. And an update on those championship drivers. Bill Martin, Justin Fuller, they moved up a couple spots, but they're only running 18th and 19th. They still have a ton of time here as it's only 14 laps in the book this time by. You'd have to go back up inside the top 10 to find somebody that's side by side, and that's Brian Hacker. The driver out of Huntley, Illinois, works the inside of Matt McLean in car number 88. Oh, Bartels wanted to go to the bottom so bad there because there was an opening, and then all of a sudden, McLean slammed the door shut. Bartels got sideways. Matt Eddy had to hit the hooks in that Eddy's performance entry, and they all go single file. They almost wadded them all up down there in the corner. Another update on one of our championship contenders. Robbie Keneally is back out of the pits. However, he is, oh, I believe, four laps down on the field, so... He is still in this race, but I think he's out of contention, at least for the win. However, the 51 machine of Justin Fuller, he's still making moves. He's trying to make moves on the outside, just like that 15 car did. Yeah, we've seen the outside work. Bill Martin just went around the outside, also on the 53 of Colin Phillip here a couple of laps ago. So the outside lane is definitely in play here tonight. So now Bill Martin and Justin Fuller are going to close up on that Oldsmobile, the Carpenter's Tax Service, number one of Jeremy Carpenter. Carpenter running into the 15th position. Fuller going to overcook the corner. He'll go to the outside here. One car going around. That's the 53. The caution lights are on. He saves it, but the caution lights are going to come on. That was Colin Phillip sideways right there with Al Smith Jr. So the caution lights coming on, and we will see what happened there to Colin Phillip. Let's see if the truck has it here. There's the 96. Where's Colin Phillip, though? Got a little bump there off the bumper of Andy Lambert. That's what's going to throw that carbon junction, number 53, of Colin Phillip sideways just a little bit. And 
Not a trick of the caution lights here tonight, so... Well, hey, they struck out. Now we're going to double them back up. And I don't think anyone will blame race control for uh, having a bit of an itchy trigger finger with that one because Colin Phillip was all sorts of out of shape. That car was nearly 90 degrees sideways, and he somehow managed to hang on to it and bring it back into line. I thought for sure that 53 car was going to be spinning out towards the outside wall. So how they're going to line up here after the caution flag is Robbie Keneally is in a lucky dog spot, so he'll get one lap back. He'll still be, I believe, three laps behind the race pace of race leader Joe Schaefer Jr. So it'll be Joe Schaefer Jr., Jimmy McIntyre Jr., Ellie Musgrave sitting there still in that third spot, and then it'll be Brian Rogers Jr. sitting there in fourth, Mike Alexander in fifth, Matthew Barkhouse is back there running into the sixth position, who's picked up nine spots, A.J. Hamill in seventh, E.J. O'Rourke in eighth, Justin McDuff in ninth, and Brian Hacker is sitting there running into the tenth position. That's your top ten here after our second caution flag of the evening for the Racing Designs 150 here tonight for the Best Colorful Creations Pro Series presented by the Upstate Racing League. I do believe I saw some... Uh, Tempers flaring out there, if I was not mistaken, with Andy Lambert, Colin Phillip, and Al Smith Jr. back there. I believe a couple of them played bumper tag here under the caution flag, or maybe somebody just kind of reached down and forgot that they uh, had to keep their foot on the accelerator. So, working our second caution flag of the evening, getting ready to go two by two here tonight once again. And like you mentioned, we nearly have a, uh, a trio of juniors up front. We got Schaefer Jr., McIntyre Jr., and then Brian Rogers Jr. Ellie Musgrave, though, kind of breaking up the, the junior-filled podium, though. All we need is Al Smith Jr. to get up there inside the top uh, top five, and we'd have a juniors, you know, poof, that's a lot of juniors here. We, we should stop because... I'm a junior, too, so come back into the Hanson Starter Shop restart zone. Joe Schaefer, Jr. of that Epic Media Machine. He'll hit the gas. He'll go fast down to the turn number one. Take a look on board with our Xander Sign Group. On board camera with Joe Schaefer, Jr. out front. Ellie Musgrave will take second spot, though, from Jimmy McIntyre. That was a fantastic launch from that 23 machine. She was right on the loud pedal and launched off to turn one. That will give her second place over Jimmy McIntyre, Jr. Now Mike Alexander on that 75 car. He's looking to the inside of the 81. He's going to get towards the completely to his door going through turns three and four with it while there's a big stack up behind him. Stack up behind them. That was, I believe, the 11 Illinois, Brian Hacker, who just missed the groove down there and washed up the speedway. He's got the 88 of McLean down to the inside of him, and then he's got the 88 of Eddie also right there. Also looks like the 2B of Bartel is also up off the bottom side of the speedway. He needs to get down to the bottom side right now. Hacker has some damage on that 11 Illinois on the right front. I don't know where he got the damage, but we have to keep a close eye contact on that. Another driver up out of the groove. That, I believe, is the 81. The best call for Creations 81 of Jimmy McIntyre just gave up the bottom. Here comes Mike Alexander and the 15 of Matthew Barkhouse. Barkhouse has had some fantastic pace here tonight. He is still ticking away through this field. Started all the way back in 15th. Now he's up to fourth as he gets clear of the 81 car. Just about there. He's going to be clear now off of turn two coming down the back straightaway. But now here comes the 12, Brian Rogers Jr. He's looking to the inside of that 81 car and he's not quite going to get there. Jimmy McIntyre able to hold off just enough uh, pace off of the top of the top lane to be able to hang on to his top five position. So we're single file all through the top five. That's EJ O'Rourke and AJ Hamill. That Arts Barbershop number 18 and YVT drain the tanks Orca coolers machine who, well, last week had himself probably the, one of the best runs he's ever had leading 99 out of the 100 laps. Unfortunately coming up, well, maybe what? 50 yards short of picking up a win here on Thursday nights. Right now, AJ is sitting seventh here as he just got back around EJ O'Rourke. So AJ Hamill right back to where he started here tonight. Bartels and McLean, the first battle out of side-by-side, -side, and that's just outside the top 10. Justin McDuff is sitting in the top 10, and that stays salty, number 20, that Empire Racing Team entry. But he's got the Bartel Builders right behind them and the Misfit Motorsports side-by-side -side and stacked up. There's the 51 of Fuller. Yeah, Fuller's still trying to make his way through the field after being involved in that accident early on. He's now on the outside of this uh, this pack, and he's been making the outside lane work at least through the la back half of this field as the 2B gets into the wall right in front of him. He's now run into a roadblock as he's got the one, uh, the 88 of Matt McLean and the 2B of Brett Bartels completely filling up the track in front of him. Bartels riding that high line in that 2B entry. The driver out of Spirit Lake, and he is just sitting there right now. Can't go anywhere, because right ahead of him, that is going to be Justin McDuff, as it's just two by two back there. And that's for the 11th, 10th, 
or 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th position. And don't count out the guy that's just behind them. That'll be the 39 of Bill Martin. Justin Smith is right there also. As Jeremy Carpenter, Al Smith, they're all lined up on the bottom. So if something were to happen to that outside lane, it's a conveyor belt zipper effect down around the bottom. They'd lose a ton of time. One car sideways. That's going to be the 88 of Eddie. Eddie off the bottom side of the speedway got sideways. He'll lose the spot to Martin. Oh, contact now just out ahead of them. McLean is going to stack up the field. They're four wide here tonight as everybody's trying to get back in the gas. And now Bartels is going to get tagged by the 53. Go. He's going to go around. He's going to hang on to it, though, and the green flag is going to stay out as we also see the 22 of Mike Holtzclaw get turned a little bit sideways. So after we go from uh, race control having a little bit too itchy of a trigger finger to race control putting away the yellow and letting the drivers sort themselves out. But we didn't have any driver get turned completely around. But with the how sideways the 2B got, I thought for sure we were going to have another caution. Matt, Eddie going to slap it off the wall once again in the Eddie Performance Solutions number 88 right ahead of Jeremy Carpenter. So everybody now starting to settle down, but boy, what a hectic couple of laps there. McLean still says, hey, I feel like Superman. I'm going to go to the outside of Al Smith Jr., see if I can get around him. So the 88 now. This is the battle back here for the 16th position. Your race leader is still Joe Schaefer Jr. leading the 23 of Ellie Musgrave, who has that second spot over Mike Alexander. So your top three have not changed hands at all. But what I can tell you is your race leader of Joe Schaefer Jr. He is out front and he is starting to run down some lap traffic. In about the next four or five laps, he is going to be sitting on the tail end of the lead lap cars of the 22 of Mike Holtz call. So, well, we'll see what happens once we get the lap traffic if Ellie Musgrave can run him back in. It's going to be a bit of a tall order because Joe Schaefer Jr. is a second and a half ahead of Ellie Musgrave at this point. And Musgrave, she's going to have to have her focus on behind her instead of in front because Mike Alexander is knocking on the door, filling up her rearview mirror and just waiting for an opportunity to get by. But he just hasn't quite been able to get carry enough pace around the corner to really make a, a move on that 23 car. Yeah, she's looking pretty solid, pretty smooth like chicken lips down around the bottom side of the speedway here, right out in front of a Wiley veteran here with the Upstate Racing League. Mike Alexander, of course, a champion here in previous years. This season, he's a little bit farther down in that Arts Barbershop Championship standings, but still always one of those contenders every week we come in here. And just a couple bad races that put him behind the eight ball. Right now, he's sitting behind that Ellie Musgrave, number 23, who is sitting in second. Barkhouse is still the biggest mover of the race. He's the only driver that has picked up double digit spots here as we close in on lap number 50 of this race. This race is going absolutely quick. Good thing we added 50 laps here tonight for all the race fans tuning in. Yeah, we would already be halfway through this, or we'd be coming up on the halfway point in this race if we were running the originally scheduled distance. So it was uh, asked of the drivers if they wanted to do an extra 50 laps and you give these guys an opportunity to turn more laps, they're going to jump right on it. And it was a uh, very overwhelming response that these guys wanted to keep driving, wanted to keep going. But Joe Schaefer Jr., he's now encountering lap traffic. He just got his way around Rodney Huntoon. And now here comes the 75, Mike Alexander. He's looking to the inside of Ellie Musgrave. Musgrave going to have to move up the racetrack. That's going to allow her, though, to carry a bit more momentum down the front, the back straightaway. Once again, though, the 75 trying to push that 23 car just up the racetrack and try to get that clear bottom lane. He's now going to send the 23 around. Oh, no, Ellie Musgrave going to go around to bring out the caution lights, but she gathers it back up. So we're we'll seeing where the officials will slot her in, but that was off the bumper of the 75 of Mike Alexander. It all started a couple of laps ago where Musgrave opened up the entry into corner one, and that actually allowed Alexander to poke the nose there. She was never able to quite get right back down to that bottom there because you got to hug the bottom. These tires are starting to wear out. We haven't seen anybody go back to the top shelf here tonight since about, oh, we'll call it lap number 20. So now here on lap number 53, the caution flag going to fly for the second time, or third time, correction, third time here tonight. We'll go back and watch what happened here to Ellie Musgrave. There you see the 75, that highlighter yellow entry down on the bottom side of the speedway. The 23 opens up the entry, and she gets down there pretty good, but it looked like the 75 just rolled the corner a little bit better, and I'm being told the 75, though, will go to the back of the pack. Yeah, the 75 did claim the caution. He will be moved to the back of the field. However, it's better to claim the caution, get moved to the back, and be able to work your way up than to not claim the caution, be found to be guilty of it after the race. And then at that point, you are given an EOL, and you are not allowed to gain any more spots. But 
There's a few drivers actually coming down pit road now. EJ O'Rourke, Justin Fuller, and Brett Bartels all come down to get some service and possibly get some tires on their cars. So we've seen fresh tires be, uh, play a factor in the previous two weeks. We'll have to keep an eye on these cars and see what they're going to be able to do. Justin Fuller will go a lap down. He will not get back out. They did put left side tires on that number 51. So he now will go a lap down. And, well, it hasn't been the first time we've seen a winner come from a lap down. So we'll keep a close eye on the 51 of Fuller here. As your rundown order, it's going to be Joe Schaefer Jr., Matthew Barkhouse to the outside, Jimmy McIntyre, Brian Rogers Jr., A.J. Hamill, Ellie Musgrave going to go from second back to six. So she'll at least hold a top 10 position here with a chance to advance her position inside the top 10. Then it'll be Brian Hacker, Justin McDuff, Bill Martin, Matt Eddy as we come back into the Hanson Starter Shop Restart Zone. Yeah, cars forming up two by two once again. We haven't seen what Matthew Barkhouse will be able to do on that outside lane. We'll have to see if he's going to be able to challenge Joe Schaefer Jr. down into turn number one. Pace car, though, getting out of the way. The Hanson Starter Shop restart zone here. And there we are going once again. Joe Schaefer Jr. leading the field down into turn number one. That 15 of Barkhouse, though, he's going to stay even up through, through turns two with a little bit of advantage, though, to Joe Schaefer Jr. now down the back straightaway. Will that 15 be able to work the outside of the speedway off turn four? They come. It'll be a drag race. Joe Schaefer Jr. going to hold the top spot. Caution lights are on. Caution lights on all around the speedway the fourth time here tonight. And it looks like for the Priority Auto, number eight out of Vermont, Andy Lambert in the 8VT has gone around to bring out the fourth caution flag of the evening here after one lap completed the green flag competition. Take a look at that 8VT entry. Right there is the Holtz Claw, number 22. And, oh, Looks like he got into the back of Colin Phillip and EJ O'Rourke. They're going to get into the back of him, and that will turn the caution lights on all around the speedway. And EJ O'Rourke is going to claim that one as well, so he'll be shuffled down, down to the back. And Justin Fuller, though, he's going to be very happy to see this quick caution because he was sitting in that lucky dog spot after taking his tires. He thought he had just caught a bad break taking tires and just getting caught one lap down. But with that immediate caution, though, that's going to pretty much negate that and he's going to be in a very good position with some fresher tires and uh, some decent track position. Yeah, he'll restart. It does look about the 19th, 20th position. But the question is, Kelly, there's damage on that 51 from that first pile up on the back straightaway and how much damage really is done to that Mustang? Well, at this point, there's going to be damage to quite a few cars and with a track like Southern National, it depends on it, it depends more on the steering geometry, I think, than the actual bodywork. That 51 car can look all banged up, but if everything's, if all the tires are pointed in the right direction and uh, it's still cambered properly, I think that 51 machine can still make some moves. So we'll find out here as this time by we should be able to double them back up and get the show back on the road here tonight in the Racing Designs 150 here for the Best Colorful Creations Pro Series. Of course, the Upstate Banquet coming up here in just, uh, well, about a month and a half away. And I heard Best Colorful Creations making their famous cake pop. So if you need a cake or some of those cake pops, make sure to head on over to Facebook.com and check out Best Colorful Creations. She had a Thomas the Tank Engine, I believe it was... Uh, cake that she made a little while back they finally got pictures posted up on their facebook page and uh, i'm very jealous of the creative minds there over at best colorful creations because i could never envision half the stuff that she makes and it makes me want all of it and so well i can't wait to see that cake at the banquet and once again huge thank you to all of our sponsors here with the upstate racing league but Hanson Starter Shop, green flag once again in the air. Here comes Joe Schaefer Jr. leading the field down into turn number one. Matthew Barcos, though, he's not going to back off an inch. He's going to try to make it work on the outside. He's going to try to stay, hang with the six car as Joe Schaefer Jr. squeezes him up against the wall. Their work side by side out of turn number four at the line. Give it to the 15 of Matthew Barkhouse just by about the splitter of that Ford Mustang. He had the race lead. Can he hold it, though, because there is Schaefer back on the bottom side. His Mustang is a little bit freer down on the bottom side of the speedway. They're race it out once again. It'll be Matthew Barkhouse by now about the whole fender with the car number 15 out front. That Xander side group contact back there. I believe that was Ellie Musgrave and Brian Hacker getting together. They were up some door panels, but the battle's still for the race lead as they work all four. We've seen Barkhouse be able to make passes on the outside before, and looks like he is going to get clear of Schaefer Jr., and he does into turn number one. Give it to Matthew Barkhouse, our new race leader, as he takes command of the field. You want to talk about a driver that has come from about the mid-pack up 14 spots here for the 
25 year old who now has the top spot here on lap number 69. Let's see if he can stretch it out. Schaefer Jr. had about a two second race lead before the first caution flag of the evening flew here tonight. And now with Matthew Barkhouse out front, see what he can do. Brian Hacker though has got moved off the bottom. Look at who is there knocking on the top five. Needs one more spot, it's Bill Martin, but look at A.J. Hamill, he has now picked up position five. Yeah, A.J. Hamill looking really good tonight. He was, uh, was very strong last week, as we mentioned, led nearly the entire race, but he has really bounced back this week and has been able to move himself up a couple spots and now is inside that top five, right on the rear bumper of the 12 of Brian Rogers Jr. One car to the outside lane back there. That's the Eddie Performance number 88 of Matt Eddie. He's got the 88 of Matt McLean down to the inside. So that misfit motorsports driver trying to trend back into the top 10 where he started here tonight. Jeremy Carpenter right behind them in the Carpenter's Tax Service. Number one Oldsmobile sideways off the corner. He'll hang on to it. Mike Alexander is right there. He has not been able to pick up too much ground. It looks like about four spots since we went back racing about 25 laps ago. So he is still sitting back there into the 13th position. Al Smith Jr. is back there running 14th. Justin Fuller is 15th. So the new tires on car 51 has not propelled him through the field. I mean, he has gained about four spots since the drop of the green flag, but it is a difficult track to pass at. He does have some damage, but hopefully those tires are going to be enough to carry him up a little bit more and maybe help him try to take a bit of a chunk out of Robbie Keneally's uh, championship lead. But going back towards the front of the field, here comes Joe Schaefer Jr. on the outside. After being passed on the outside by the 15, he's trying to see if he can make the outside lane work. Trying to take the look. He's got the fender right there, but you're going to need more than a fender sideways there for the number six as he was all sorts of out of shape. He hung on to it, and that's good to see because if he would have put it in the wall there, that could have been the end of his night. We still are, well, we're halfway home at this point now here tonight in the Racing Designs 150 as he'll really drive it off into the corner. Yeah, he is trying his hardest to keep up with that 15 car, but you got to wonder, are these guys both driving the cars just a little too hard, burning off their tires? Like you mentioned, we are just past the halfway point now. If they want to hang on to this track position and not have to pit for tires, they have to start conserving these tires. We've seen a few, uh, few other drivers come down pit road. However, none of them have really been able to make much happen other than Justin Fuller, who just a few laps ago we mentioned was up four positions and was in 15th. He's now up to 12th, so keep an eye on that 51 car. He is starting to make his way through the field. Maybe it just took a little while for those tires to come in for the driver out of New York and now trying to press the issue to work his way up. Jeremy Carpenter to the outside of the r, &R Kinsman Auto Salvage, number 75 of Mike Alexander. Alexander holding him off for the time being. Oh, maybe a little contact there. Carpenter, you saw the hands on that number one. It kind of crossed him up and crossed him over. He will fall back into the line there into the 14th spot. He'll slot himself in right ahead of Al Smith Jr. Couple cars bumping and banging throughout the field though. Here comes the 51 of Justin Fuller. He's now gonna make a move on the outside of the 88 of Matt Eddy. He is really making those tires work, but he is starting to take a little bit of life out of them as we saw him get sideways off of turn number two and a little tag of the wall down the back straightaway. However, not gonna slow him up. He gains another spot. He's just outside the top 10 now. So Fuller trying to put himself into the top 10. Joe Schaefer Jr. is just hanging right there with Matthew Barkhouse. They will work upon lap traffic here in the next 10 laps or so. There you see the 45. That is Justin Smith. Smith, a modified driver out of New York, taking his hand, his talent here to the asphalt side of things with the Upstate Racing League here with the best colorful creations. Pro Series this season over the winter time, and of course Justin Smith uh, painting up a lot of the cars that you see here in the field. But right now, that Pillsbury Doughboy number 45 is a little loose out there as he's been sideways more times than not tonight. Yeah, definitely a rough night for that 45 car. He's, he's carrying a little bit of damage on that race car. I think he he's definitely not in the worst shape, but. He may have banged up that car and just knocked something out of alignment, which is really scrubbing off a lot of his speed as Matthew Barco still continues to close up and, and this lap traffic may just factor into this battle for the race lead. Take a look at the Xander Signs onboard camera with the Xander Signs 15 machine, and that is Matthew Barkhouse out front, and I think Jimmy McIntyre is actually starting to close in as the caution lights come out as the 96 out of South Glens Falls, New York is around in car number 96. That is Al Smith Jr. and the caution lights on all around the speedway. So that a uh, slow the field here for it looks like that is the fifth caution flag of the evening. Al Smith does 
is able to pull away, but it looks like he'll <laughs> he'll loop it down into pit road. Yeah, Al Smith Jr. just in pit was was turned into pit road, and while he was waiting for the field to kind of go by, got tagged by another car. So I think he got a lot of damage to the front end of that machine. So it was a little bit difficult for him to get moving once again. And unfortunately, I think. Uh, it might be the end of that 96 cars. There is a ton of cars now coming down pit road and look to be taking on some fresh tires. Well, what's that? It's going to get swallowed up by the field. Well, we're going to find out here. We should be able to double them up this time by here tonight to come back into the Hanson Stoker Shop restart zone for our Racing Designs 150 here tonight. As it does look like the iRacing.com official pace car lights do go out. So we are geared up and ready to go here tonight. It'll be 93 laps officially completed here tonight as Matthew Barkhouse will lead us back. Matthew Barkow is going to be in control of the field for the first time. Pace car down and away, and immediately he's going to launch off towards the Hanson Starter Shop restart zone. And here comes a 20 of Justin McDuff. He's going to get to the inside of Brian Rogers Jr. Now all the cars with the fresh tires are trying to charge up through. Here comes Justin Fuller looking to the inside of that 12 car. Here comes the Stay Salty Machine sideways for J-Mac as he was down on the bottom side. He got sideways. Now here comes Brian Rogers Jr. battling back on the outside. He is going to get there, but the question being, can he get around him before Justin Fuller pounces? Contact back behind them. That was Joe Schaefer. One car way up the speedway. That's the 45 of Justin Smith. The three wide. One car up onto the hood of the 45. That was the 88 of Matt Eddy. As, oh boy, Pillsbury Doughboy was giggling all the way down the front straightaway because he had an undershot of that car. No more contact towards the front. That's going to be the 20 and the 12 as the 12 of Brian Rogers Jr. gets into the wall. He's going to move back a few spots, and now it's going to open up an opportunity for Justin Fuller. He's going to get to the inside of McDuff, and with those fresher tires, he's going to make that inside line work. He's going to have the spot coming across the start-finish line, but just behind him is a ton of cars that just took new tires, including Joe Schaefer Jr., who we know has been fast even with worn tires. We'll have to see what he can do with some fresh rubber underneath him. It'll be 99 laps completed when we come back around here. Matthew Barkhouse, Justin Fuller, who's got that epic media number six of Joe Schaefer Jr. right there. Schaefer's going to close in on the entry and look at him roll the center. One car going around. That's going to be the 18. Oh, the one of Carpenter Hart into the outside wall. Caution flag flies once again on lap 100. So if this was the, uh, the scheduled distance, we would have been going into a green-white checker just now, but... We still have another 50 laps ahead of us and a lot of time for these strategies to play out. So as Carpenter goes around, let's take a look back at the replay here, see if we can find out what happened. There was contact between A.J. Hamill, I do believe, and Brian Rogers Jr. There it was. Hamill goes around, collects the Carpenter's tax service entry, hard nose into the wall there for Jeremy Carpenter. Yeah, it's an unfortunate situation for the one of Jeremy Carpenter who just got tagged as he was trying to get around the the spinning 18 car. And just the way he was hit, it sent it directed all of his pace all right towards the outside wall. And there was nothing he could do to even really make it anything other than just a 90 degree impact of the wall. And that was some hard contact. But thankfully, he is uh, safe and sound behind his computer instead of behind the wheel of this machine. So we do not have to worry about the one car, but I think his night may be done as there is a ton of damage to the front end of that machine. Oh, actually, no, he is going to get moving out of the uh, out of pit road, so don't count him out just yet. As it looks like the 81 of Jimmy McIntyre Jr. will take the lucky dog here, so he will take that lucky dog and put himself now back on the race lead lap. So he got put a lap down as he came to pit road. And now... It will give us 15 cars on the lead lap here and under 50 laps to go after our sixth caution flag of the evening here for the Racing Designs 150 for the Best Colorful Creations Pro Series presented by the Upstate Racing League. As it looks like we still have the pace car lights on here. Pace car lights are still on. Hopefully they will go off as they cross their finish line because I'm sure like a lot of these drivers, I want to see these guys get back to racing. And yes, pace car lights are off. We are going to have another 45 laps of racing ahead of us. And we'll see if Matthew Barkos with his old tires still has not pit. See if he can hold off the rest of the cars that pit on lap 89. 
Hanson starter shop green flag coming back out here to be 105 laps completed. Fuller to the outside. Barkhouse, though, is going to get a great start here. He'll nose ahead into turn number one. See if that Mustang can roll the bottom side of the speedway. Joe Schaefer Jr. also down there. But look at Fuller, able to hold serve for the time being. They're coming back to complete the first lap. And the drag race going to give it to the number 15 of Matthew Barkhouse. Fuller still working out there, and it is hanging on there. But he's got the 39 of Bill Martin sideways for both your race leaders. Yeah, and credit to Matthew Barkhouse. He is on very, very old tires, 106 laps old now, and he's hanging on against Matt Justin Fuller, who pit on lap 54. But just behind them, every, nearly everyone else came down on lap 89, got some tires, and they're just basically waiting for these two cars in front of them to finish their fight so they can try to make a move around them. I have to wonder, though, is Joe Schaefer Jr. and Bill Martin, are they going to be patient enough, or is one of them going to try to make it three wide? Well, we'll find out here as they go down into the corner. Oh, the 51 of Justin Fuller going to tag the outside wall on entry into turn number three. Now there's contact for the race leaders. The 15 stays on the bottom, although 51 was just into the door panel there. They made the contact, and they kept it going. This time down the back straightaway, the 15 of Barkhouse going to nose ahead. Look at the 79 of Mike Alexander. He is back to the front here now, just trailing the race leaders. Matthew Barkos is going to get a nose ahead. He's now actually going to get clear of the 51 of Justin Fuller. However, this is going to open up an opportunity for Joe Schaefer Jr. He's now going to get to the inside of Fuller. He's going to now try to get a second place. Fuller trying to squeeze him down. I think it was Schaefer just at the line there. He's now nosing ahead. And with those fresher tires, it's only a matter of time before he starts to get around Matthew Barkos. So your race leader down around the bottom, but he's got a mirror full of that epic media machine of Joe Schaefer Jr. Remember, your race leader did not take tires, did not come to pit road when everybody else did. So Barkhouse trying to hold off at least the two tires there for Joe Schaefer Jr. Justin Fuller sideways once again. Mike Alexander down to the inside of him now. Alexander trying to bring that. Xander Signs Group number 75 into the P number three. Bill Martin just kind of sitting back there. He is biting his time. He hasn't gone to the outside. He hasn't gone to the inside. He's just kind of running there. Battle for the race lead, though. Joe Schaefer Jr. gets to the inside of Matthew Barkos down off of turn number two. Now coming off of turn number two, the lap later, he's nearly a full car length ahead. Now going into turn number three, he's got the advantage of the grip, and he is going to clear Matthew Barkos. Now here comes Mike Alexander. He's trying to get to the inside of that 15 machine. And he's actually going to get a, a bit of a tag to Matthew Barkhouse, but still not going to have the uh, positioning to get himself around and into second place. One car to the outside groove there. That's the 11 Illinois, Brian Hacker. He's making the outside groove work now because he's got to the outside of Bill Martin. Martin just kind of holding ground down on the bottom side. So that Pathfinder's chassis, number 11 Illinois, trying to work to the front. But look, here comes the 75 now to the inside. Here comes Mike Alexander. Maybe the tires now at this point for the 15 of Barkhouse are absolutely gone. He'll fall back to P number three. Fuller still sitting there on the inside lane with car 51. He's being scored in fifth position here. 118 laps about to go up on the board. And Joe Schaefer Jr. is now running away from the field once again. We saw this at the beginning of the race when he uh, led the field to the green flag. He pretty much took off right away. Now that he's got fresh tires once again, he's starting to run off. And like I said, maybe said earlier, though, for Justin Fuller, he may have taken his tires too early because now here comes Bill Martin on the outside. And Fuller, who restarted in second place, is now going to be all the way down to six. Actually, Martin going to get into the wall. So Fuller going to hold on to fifth for just a little longer. We saw the outside work with fresh tires, and we're seeing it work once again here at the end of the race. Closing in on just 25 laps to go here tonight in the Racing Designs 150. The battle now, though, look as Matthew Barkhouse is under pressure for third. Here comes Brian Hacker. He is working the outside. He's got the turn three racing night scheme on here tonight with the lights sideways for the 15. Barkhouse trying to let it all out there on the racetrack as he is being outgunned by those new tires. Hacker will take P number three. Yeah, and those tires on the 15 car have to be absolutely shredded at this point after 123 laps on them. So it's going to be uh, difficult for Barkhouse to even get the power down out of these corners, but he is now starting to come under pressure from Bill Martin, and I'm sure if a caution were to fly now, actually right behind them though, Bill or Justin Fuller, he's going to get tagged by Matt McLean, and Matt McLean going to move himself through on that bottom side. Here comes that 88 of McLean, the Misfit Motorsports, best colorful creation, sideways for McLean that time. So here comes Fuller marching back on the outside. They got Matt Eddy back there and AJ Hamill, and now battle up 
in front of them. There's the 38 of Bill Martin. He's going to cross over the 15 down the back straightaway. He'll look to take it off turn number four. Martin down on the bottom side. We haven't seen too many people make a pass on the inside lane here as of late. But that 38 or 39 machine is looking pretty stout. Just could not get the runoff too. And there's a huge discrepancy of tires between these cars but with one that has not pit and one that pit just on lap 89. So I'm going to say the advantage is the Bill Martin on those much, much fresher tires. He's going to get himself through into P4. Matthew Barcos, though, still hanging on to a top five at this point with under 25 laps to go. He's hanging on to that, and so is Matt McLean. He just took that spot. Now Matt Eddy, so the Matt and Matts are trying to get around Justin Fuller. Fuller, remember, did pit earlier than everybody else here tonight. He pitted back on lap number 54 while everybody else came down under that lap number 89, lap 90 caution flag. So he will fall back now to ninth. He's got A.J. Hamill back there, and A.J. Hamill has put on two fresh tires compared to him. Race leader with 22 to go, though. Still going to be Joe Schaefer Jr., Mike Alexander, and Brian Hacker, 1, 2, and 3. Nearly a second separates each one of those three cars. So really a uh, great run from Joe Schaefer Jr. And actually, it's pretty much two seconds between Alexander and Hacker. So the 6 and the 75 pretty much checking out into a league of their own at this point. 20 laps to go this time by to be 19 now for the Epic Media number 6. The driver out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. That Epic Media machine showing that he is the class of the field. Taking a look at the last time by... Don't quite start to sign the check to Joe Schaefer Jr. Because I'm looking at it last time by. It was about a tenth of a second quicker for Mike Alexander. Take a look at the line this time by. Uh, Joe Schaefer Jr. going to put up a 1462 to a 1464 for Mike Alexander. So holds him at bay last time by. Yeah, Alexander has the potential for some fast laps. But Schaefer Jr. has just been hanging on and putting on some very consistent times as once again, that lap time is nearly the same as his previous two. With right just a little bit behind them, though, Bill Martin is closing in on Brian Hacker. He is going to try to catch that 11 Illinois uh, machine and try to get himself into another podium position. Yeah, it's been a couple podiums for the 39, but that time by, he got himself a little crossed up out of turn number four. So with 16 laps to go, Hacker still holds on to that final podium position. Back there behind one oh, car going around. Turned around. Yeah, that's the 15 of Matthew Barkhouse going around as he was trying to hold off some of those faster cars with the fresher tires. He goes around. He's trying to get it back going before the leader comes to put him a lap down as Joe Schaefer Jr. will pass by the 15. We'll see where the scoring tower does put the 15 of Matthew Barkhouse. Remember, Barkhouse was battling and contending for the win but did not take tires and the officials are telling him to hold his position, so that is going to be a disappointment there for the 15 uh, there for Barkhouse. Let's take the look back here. There's the 88. That's going to be Matt McLean getting right into the back of the 15. The slightest little nudge there, but on those older tires that we talked about, there was nothing left of the tires on, Mar on Barkhouse's car, and just that slightest little tap sends him around. Yeah, it just took a little nudge to get him out of shape, and I think he was already on the edge of grip, so really it didn't. you pretty much just had to breathe on that 15 car to have him break loose. So really unfortunate for Matthew Barkos as he's been running a strong race here, but without taking fresh tires, there really wasn't much of a chance for him. And now he is going to come down pit road, but with him being a lap down and with the amount of time left in this race, I don't think it's going to be a, there's really going to be much of a chance for that 15 unless he gets a few things to fall his way. Well, you never know. Don't say die. Don't write the check to Joe Schaefer Jr. We just talked about that because now with this restart here, he's going to have Mike Alexander right there behind him. It'll be about, oh, call it 10 laps or so to go when we do go back racing. And we've seen some epic finishes here in the last two weeks with the Upstate Racing League. And we are literally gearing up to do it here once again. It does look like the 15 of Barkhouse will get out ahead of the race leaders, so he will tag the back of the field. Yeah, he's going to have to bring himself back around and hope for a quick caution to get himself waved back around, but he will still have to pass one more car to get himself into that lucky dog position. Into the Hanson Starter Shop restart zone after the seventh caution flag here on the night. Green flag is up, and we are racing. Schaefer with a great start, but Mike Alexander going to hold him at bay. Oh, Schaefer going to wash up the speedway down in one. That allowed Alexander to hold him right there. He's on the quarter panel as a two-by-two two into turn three. And there is that caution, quick caution that we were talking about, and that is going to be out for Justin Smith in that 45 car as he gets turned around in turns number one and two. 
So a rough night for Justin Smith. Just got rougher here. He just came back after battling COVID as he missed a couple weeks with the Upstate Racing League. And he's back here tonight. And, well, let's take the look. He was battling with Ellie Musgrave. What happens here? As, oh, Musgrave hot into the corner. Going to get into the back of the 45. And Justin Smith just not able to handle the bump there down on the apron side of things. Right on board here, facing back with our Xander Sign Group on board camera. There's Ellie Musgrave down to the inside. And just wrong spot, wrong time for Justin Smith. And that Smith Racing Inc. entry. He goes around. No contact with the wall, though. And looking through the uh, timing and scoring, it looks like there are still two cars out track that have not seen pit road once this entire race. That is the 20 of Justin McDuff still sitting in eight at the moment. And Brian Rogers Jr. in the 12 car, he's currently in 13th. Neither of those cars have put fresh tires on. Neither of them have come down for service. They have basically continued this car from the way it started this race. And at this point, I there's no real chance for them to come down pit road, so they have to just hang on and hope they can nurse these things to the end. So they take a look at that. Lightning McQueen replica for Brian Rogers Jr. with our Brian Rogers Motorsports blimp camera here tonight in our Racing Designs 150 here. As Rogers still has time to get a couple positions here in the late going. Coming back getting ready here as this time by the field will be told to double them back up it will be uh is it going to be a three lap shootout four lap shootout i think it's going to be a four lap shootout as long as we don't get another caution that would bring out the green white checkered rules so we'll have to see if joe schaefer jr can hang on against mike alexander as those two guys were having a fantastic battle on that last restart into the Hanson Starter Shop restart zone we come. Joe Schaefer Jr. says, chase me if you can this time, Mike Alexander. <laughs> Great start there. As, oh my gosh, I almost fell over. Yeah, two cars got a little bit of a wiggle with a bit of a wheel spin. That was the, both the six of Schaefer Jr. and the 11 Illinois of Brian Hacker, but Schaefer still holding on some fantastic pace. Now he's going to move himself up in front of the 75 of Mike Alexander. Just three more laps to go. Can Schaefer hold on? Back there, the battle for third, the final podium spot. One driver actually going to climb the wall back there. I believe that was the 53 of Colin Phillip, and they're going to stack them up here. Caution lights coming on for the ninth time here tonight in the Racing Designs 125. I believe Jeremy Carpenter and Al Smith have maybe met each other, and it wasn't at the Devil's Bowl Speedway either. We'll take a look back here. So the green-white checker will be in effect here tonight in the Racing Designs 125. 50 here for the Best Colorful Creations Pro Series presented by the Upstate Racing League. Take a look back here. Replay is going to show it. What happens to the number one machine? There you see Carpenter. No, oh, he's just going to lose it on his own. Matt McLean, innocent bystander. Holtz, Claw, and Smith also just innocent, innocent bystanders there as Carpenter just tried to get a little bit out of it and just kind of, well, ran out of grip. Yeah, late stages in the race, they're going to have hot, worn tires on a hot track. So just a, a little too much in that right foot as the 15 of Barkhouse trying to make his way around the field as the lucky dog. There's a little bit of a, of a traffic jam, so he will get himself back on the lead lap. However, with the green-white checkered, all he can really do is try to salvage a few positions and get a little bit of points for this race. Looks like he should restart right around the 18th, 19th position. So we're keeping an eye to see how many p positions he can pick off with those fresher tires here tonight. Keep an eye on him as we will go green next time by green-white checker attempt number one. We only have one green-white checker attempt here in the Upstate Racing League. So this will be it. The next flag will end this race. Will it be Schaefer, Alexander, Hacker, Martin, Eddie, Fuller, they're all up there, and it's anybody's ball game. Into the Hanson Soda Shop restart zone here as the iRacing.com official pace car will hit pit road. Green flag is out for the final time tonight. And a good restart from the inside line as both Joe Schaefer Jr. and Brian Hacker get a good start. Now Hacker, he's going to get to the inside of the 75 of Mike Alexander. Alexander, though, fighting back on that high side. He's going to have to try to chase down Joe Schaefer Jr. Schaefer, though, going to get the white flag, and he will hang on to this lead. So the Carpenter's tax service white flag is up for Joe Schaefer. Final time down the max right away. Final time through turns three and four. It will be Joe Schaefer Jr. picking up the Racing Designs 50, 150 here tonight. 
as it'll be Mike Alexander, Brian Hacker, Bill Martin, Justin Fuller, Matt Eddy, Justin McDuff, along with A.J. Hamill, Jimmy McIntyre, and Brett Bartels rounding down your top 10 field. Timing is going on the left-hand side of your screen, all unofficial here tonight until the Upstate Racing officials do get to cross-check all these drivers. There is your winner, though, Joe Schaefer Jr. out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. We'll get to talk with him, and we'll get to talk with Mike Alexander along with Brian Hacker after these messages. iRacing is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all around the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scan with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics, engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 170,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsports organizations like NASCAR to deliver virtual races based on the real-life NASCAR Cup Series, as well as many other series on the NASCAR ladder. iRacing also features team racing, providing a variety of options for members to create and manage their own teams, race with friends or real-world teammates in full-length endurance events like the 24 Hours of Daytona, Spa 24, or the Bathurst 12 Hour. Additional partners include IMSA, World of Outlaws, Supercars, and IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own Indianapolis 500, Bathurst 1000, Chili Bowl, and many more iconic events. This is iRacing, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car. Sign up today at iRacing.com. Welcome back here, race fans, tonight to the Racing Designs 150 here for the Best Colorful Creations Pro Series as we have finished this one off. Needed a green-white checker attempt to get the winner's name here, and we have etched it into the check, as I believe, Kelly Dahl, you are standing by with the winner here tonight. Yeah, caught up now with Joe Schaefer Jr., the chauffeur who drove around this field here tonight. Joe, congratulations on the race win, and how did the, uh, the tire strategy factor into the race tonight? Well, kind of like we were talking about before we came back, um, it's made a huge difference these past few weeks. Um, now that everybody's kind of gotten together and settled down a little bit, we're getting some long green flag runs. And honestly, I thought I went too early. Um, I got to give uh, Matthew a lot of credit. Uh, 15 car. He, he made it work on the old tires for a long time and schooled me on the outside on a restart. So... I knew the outside was going to be tough to beat, but I was hoping the tires, uh, hoping the tires would make a big enough difference to get to the lead. And those late restarts definitely were uh, were pucker factor on ten for me. And that's something we really haven't heard much uh, this whole season is that you had to worry about the outside lane. And how is that different from a track where the inside is completely dominant when you actually do have to maybe worry about a driver trying to sneak around the right side? Well, it's tough because from from the inside, um, something with the way eye racing works with the tire heat and the groove, um, the outside lane becomes faster because they can just hold that guy on the inside down. Um, and a couple times, obviously, I slid up the track and I might have made contact with Matthew a couple times and I definitely hit Mike a couple times, but the thing just won't turn on the bottom. So, I mean, the guy on the bottom can go in there and, you know, force the issue and really pound the guy on the outside up the hill. But if you're going to race with a little respect, that guy on the outside definitely carries momentum and he limits how early the guy on the inside can get to the gas. Um, that's probably not the way it runs here in real life. Um, but on iRacing, that's definitely something you got to worry about. Well, next week we are going to be moving down to Five Flags Speedway just down there in Florida. What are you kind of uh, expecting from that race? 
I think it's going to end up racing kind of kind of like we did here. Um, outside lane is going to become preferred. Leader is going to be a sitting duck on restarts. Um, that's that's just the way it's going to go. Um, hopefully we can get some long green flag runs and make it real interesting with tires. That makes the re these races a lot of fun. Um, when you're when you, especially when you're the one with the new tires, um, not so much running from them. Um, but it makes it fun to fun to do and uh, having a lot of fun with uh, getting some long grade flag runs and making tires actually matter. Well, Joe, thank you so much for coming on and talking to us. But before we let you go, who would you like to thank for your win here tonight? As always, uh, Drew Cryback with Epic Media, Dr. Noise Custom Diecast Designs, um, Al and everybody at Upstate putting on the show and, and you guys for running the broadcast. Thank you. Well, that was Joe Schaefer Jr. Joe, once again, congratulations on the win, and hopefully we'll hear from you again at Five Flag Speedway. Hopefully. Thank you. All right, going to send it back over now to Roger Muth, who I think is caught up with another one of our uh, podium finishers. Yeah, caught up here with the driver that will finish third here tonight is the driver out of Huntley, Illinois, Brian Hacker. Brian, it's been a very long time since you've been able to find the podium here with the Upstate Racing League, but you did it here tonight, but there's some damage on the right front of this car. Yeah, a couple times got a little hairy tonight, but it's it has been a while. This is my first podium of the year. This is my, I had, I think, five, top, uh, five fourth place finishes, so it's nice to finally... Uh, get up here and get to talk to you guys walk us through tonight we've seen a lot of guys down on the bottom really kind of have that conveyor effect down around the bottom side of the speedway but we also saw some drivers be able to go up to the outside here late in this one it looked like the 11 illinois found a little some little something up there yeah kind of like joe was saying uh after a while once the tires kind of even out and wear off a little bit um the top side just carries more momentum it's hard to uh these things are pretty tight, especially here, so it's hard to get the thing slowed up and uh, on the throttle early enough on the bottom to be able to carry that momentum. So if you can get the top rolling uh, at a place like this with the banking, um, seems to be the prefer preferred line around. And it worked for us tonight. Um, this is not my style of racetrack that I'm typically all that good at, but uh, I'm certainly going to take it take it here tonight as we close in on the end of this season i mean it's been a rough one you've had some pretty fast race cars you just haven't been able to really work your way through as we close in on the final couple of races are we going to be able to carry this momentum we got five flags and we have hickory and then that is it for the season until next winter when these cars come back out of the garage yeah, traditionally speaking, I haven't been all that great at Five Flags, but uh, Hickory's different. I think uh, a lot of people are still learning that track, so we'll uh, we'll see what we can do these last two weeks. But um, I think we're fifth in points right now. If we can climb up and maybe finish fourth or third, I think we'd be pretty happy with that overall for the season. We've had a lot of decent finishes, just uh, haven't gotten to talk to you guys a whole lot. We've gotten wrecked out probably more than we'd like to. Well, this Pathfinder chassis really wrapping it around the speedway here tonight for you, Brian. Who made this all possible later into the season to get things done here tonight? Well, this will probably be my only interview with you this season, so I'll probably take my time with this. But uh, thanks to Empire Racing Team and Justin and uh, AJ and uh, Andy running tonight. Uh, Chris couldn't make it. Steph couldn't make it. But uh, thanks to those guys and all their help. Uh, Carbon Junction, Narrative Coffee. Pathfinder chassis. Um, thanks to Beth's colorful creation, creations for coming on board uh, this season. It sounds like hopefully they'll be back uh, soon. And then um, thanks to, uh, I think it was Racing Designs tonight for uh, sponsoring tonight's race. Uh, good win to uh, Joe up front. Nice run to Mike Alexander finishing second. He probably had to jump on a plane and get back to middle of nowhere, Canada, where he's from. And uh, thanks to Al and the guys put this thing on. Thanks to you and uh, Roger. Love watching, or you and uh, Kelly, I should say, for uh, putting this thing on. I like going back and watching these the day after. It always, uh, it's it's a good, it's a good solid broadcast, and you can kind of see what went well and what went didn't the night before. And uh, as always, no thanks to Wayne McDuff. And there you hear it from the driver out of Huntley, Illinois. Brian Hacker will finish P number three here tonight as we finally look like we have our second place finisher here tonight. Kelly, he, he ran away from you for a little bit, but he has finally found his way back over here. Yeah, I finally find, uh, tracked down where that 75 car wound up, and I have found the driver of said 75 car with Mike Alexander here now, our second place finisher. Mike, you had quite the wild end to this race with that green-white checkered. I think this is only the second time 
that we've seen a green white checkered this season what's it like to start on the outside in second place knowing you just got a couple laps to get it done Oh, you know, it was it was pretty nerve wracking. I, uh, I I really thought I'd have a better shot up there. I thought the the top uh, would have been fine if I had a just you know stayed to his door. Um, if I could have stayed out there, um, could have made a run at it. But I know I I get out there and I was I was driving it too deep in and I just, I just couldn't get it done. And you know I I was trying my best, but I, I was just uh, overdriving it a little too much. Well, we mentioned a few times throughout the broadcast that tonight's race was originally scheduled for 100 laps. However, they did add another 50 laps on top of that. Did that kind of change your strategy coming in here tonight? Uh, not really. With the last the two weeks before here, just going um, with the, the tire deal and, and those guys winning, it, it pretty much just played out the same way. I, I figured that uh, we were going to have to take tires at some point and get through. And uh, I feel bad for Matt there. He, uh, he made the wrong call um but uh no it's good to get up get up here get a second place and you know I've, i felt like i haven't ran that that good this year i've been i've been missing something and uh, it feels pretty good to be back on the podium well that we just got a couple more races left in this season do you think you might be up here once again maybe at five flags or hickory um you know hickory i might have a shot i like that place um five flags probably no no chance um you know, I, I'm, I'm not very good there, and I'll be the first to admit that that's definitely my worst track on the service. So if I'm on the podium there, something something went catastrophically wrong for the rest of the field. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for coming out and talking to us. Before we let you go, though, who would you like to thank for your run here tonight that got you all the way up to second place? Uh, I want to thank Arnar, Kinsley's Auto Salvage, uh, Xander Sign Group, uh, all my family that watches. Uh, you guys for putting the, doing the broadcast and uh, Al and all the admins here for uh, for giving us an awesome place to race. You know this is you know best league I've I've ever run, so it's uh, it's an awesome place to race. So thank those guys and um, yeah, I think I think that's it. All right, well thank you for coming and talking to us once again, and congratulations once more on your second place run. And hopefully we'll hear from you again at Five Flags. But thanks a lot. That was Mike Alexander, driver of the 75 machine and our second place finisher tonight. And now to send it back to Roger Muth for a few final thoughts. Closing thoughts here tonight. Boy, what another great race we had here with the Best Colorful Creations Pro Series tonight for the Racing Designs 150. It's three in a row that we have seen amazing races that have all come down right to the wire with different tire strategies and who pitted when and did they pit at all. Of course, you saw the 15 of Barkhouse here tonight try and really stretch it out, and he was able to hold serve for quite a while before finally somebody just got right into the back of him. And around went the 15, Joe Schaefer Jr. Jr., along with Mike Alexander and Brian Hacker playing that strategy just to perfection here tonight. And man, I don't even know what to expect next week when we go to Five Flags. And I really don't know what to expect once we see Hickory for the first time ever with the Upstate Racing's Thursday Night Asphalt program. We've never seen it. It's brand new to the service. Yeah, I have no idea what to expect from that track, but I know at Five Flags we are going to have another fantastic race most likely. And with the way tires, the tire strategy has factored in this season in these last few races, I think we might be uh, in store for another wild finish. But that's going to about wrap things up here tonight at Southern National for the Racing Designs 150. Joe Schaefer Jr. parks it in victory lane here this season. That'll be the second time he's taken that epic media number six to victory lane. Congratulations to him, Mike Alexander, and Brian Hacker for finishing on the podium. For Kelly Dahl and the whole crew here with the Turn 3 Racing Network, we hope you enjoyed tonight's show here for the Best Colorful Creations Pro Series. And until we catch you next time, everybody, everyone stay safe, and we'll see you in Turn 3.